I'm Thomas Liebens. I'm a health economist and I work mainly on questions of health financing at Oxford Policy Management. The question of transition planning is the result of changes in the sources of funding for the health sector. That question came to the fore, uh, especially when donors who fund health programs in low and middle income countries started to do so less and less as these countries became richer and richer. Initially, we all thought this is all about the money and that the question of transition planning was to ensure that we could find replacement uh, budgets for these retraining donors. And often the replacement budgets would be uh, funding out of the national domestic budget. However, what we discovered is that when donors retreated from funding certain programs in the health sector, that retreat in itself gave rise to impacts on health expenditure performance. But it wasn't only about adequacy of funding and program coverage. What we also found, for example, that um, donor retreat uh, was associated to changes in efficiency of uh, the health system. And for example, the unit cost of, say, a service like voluntary counseling and testing, which is very common as a part of the suit of HIV services, the unit cost of VCT is often higher when funded by donors as opposed to funded by national governments. And that is because donors typically, or in some cases, would fund um, non-governmental and private sector providers uh, as opposed to public providers. For example, donors typically are quite interested in ensuring that certain population groups, such as men having sex, sex with men, uh, sex workers injecting drug users, have access to certain health services, while governments might be less uh, inclined to do so. So it's more than just about the money. So the major challenges of, in transition planning today, I think it's first in, and foremost important to point out how much progress has been made. So sort of various organizations have thought about this, it's quite a complex area, um, and have come up with a series of tools that we uh, all use now in the sector and are uh, finding very uh, useful. However, what is also becoming apparent is that these tools that are available and have been produced by FEPFA, by Gavi, by the World Bank, by the Global Fund, by various organizations, they are characterized by a number of um, issues. So the first of all, we find, and uh, there's not necessarily something wrong with that, but that they tend to favor breadth over depth. So they would uh, explore the various effects associated to changes in sources of funding for the health sector, yeah? uh, as opposed to necess not necessarily drilling down in each of these effects. Uh, another uh, characteristic is, for example, uh, that they are um, donor biased. So often these analyses are made on behalf of a donor that intends uh, to uh, retreat, finally. And lastly, uh, we also see that they might be more diagnostic focused as opposed to solution focused. So they will tell you what will happen if the donor retreats. They will not necessarily indicate in a very precise way what you should do in order to mitigate the effect of that retreat. The major contribution we seek to make in our work is to really squarely focus our diagnostic and solutions oriented work on policymakers in uh, developing countries. So uh, our solutions, we like to like to be uh, firmly embedded in national policy frameworks and uh, institutional and uh, governance frameworks in the countries we work in. So our focus is the director of planning of the Ministry of Health uh, and is not necessarily one of the donors that funds programs in the Ministry of Health.